When working with outboard gear, latency is always a factor, and in this clip, Chris shows you his parallel drum bus made up of a pair of outboard distressors. He'll show you how delay compensation works in the box with outboard gear so everything stays in time and in phase. Enjoy. Yeah, let's get the processing on those buses, and then once we dive into drums, I'll show you how I, lately how I've been setting up my overall mix bus, but I think it'll be easier to do that um, after the fact, my, my overall routing. Um, so we've got this going. Let's set up the parallel bus for compression. Um, and for this one, I'm going to use uh, hardware distressors, which are behind me. And I get to them through this hardware insert. So my insert's up here. You've got your plugins, stereo, multi mono. And then down here, there's IO, which actually lets you go in and out of your A to D converters. Now, because my A to D converters are made by Avid or, or made by Prism and not Avid, they don't automatically compensate on their own. Um, the software compensates for everything inside the software, but um, all, all other converters besides Avid's converters that are that the software is programmed to time align with um, are generally faster, which is done on purpose. So Avid's uh, software and Avid's uh, for Pro Tools, Avid's converters are have a much slower um, delay. They 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 go in and out slower than pretty much every other converter on the market. That way, you can add a delay plugin, which is called um, going here to DSP. It's called Time Adjuster, and it lets you change the samples, uh, change in increments of samples to add a little bit of delay to offset the time because my prism converters are faster. So when they go out and back in, they actually come in earlier than the software, if that makes sense, because the software has been programmed to compensate for a slower converter. So this compensates for the compensation. and this is something that you can figure out with your converters. It's pretty easy. You can just do like a blip test um, by uh, sending out to your converter and back in on a track and record it with a little tick or a blip, and then you can time align them and measure the samples. Um, I don't really want to get too deep into that, but that's how I figured this out in the first place. And then I have presets for different stuff. I spelled that wrong, but oh well. So. I have to add a 15 sample delay to make these converters come in right. And I can show you on my distressors. I can just show you why that matters. So here's the dry bus and then the bus with the hardware distressors on it with time adjuster and going through my prisms. Um, and actually, I'm going to put time adjuster first. It doesn't matter if it's before or after because delay is delay. Um, I'm going to put it first because it also has gain adjustment on it. So if I'm going into my distressors too strong, I can adjust it. I'm just going to play the drums real quick and show you um, why the time adjuster is important. And I've got this muted. So that's both going. Here's just the dry bus. And then that's the snappiness from the distressors. And, and as you can hear, it, it comes in real subtle behind it as I bring it up. And because it's in phase, because I've used time adjuster, nothing changes with the tone. It just adds more snap, more compression. And if I wasn't using time adjuster, if I was just running it in and out without compensating for the delay, it would sound awful like this. So that's super important. And your sample settings, if you're doing something like this, are going to change uh, depending on what sample rate you're using. So at 48K, um, you're going to have a different delay with your converters than 96 or 44.1 or 88.2. 
Um, and this session for me is a 96K, so I know that 15 samples is my number. So I've got that bus. This bright bus, I'm gonna leave alone for a minute. Um, here is the settings I'm using. Um, these are the distressors in 20 to one. They're both linked. The input is six, which really just controls the threshold, uh, how much gain reduction we're doing. Attack is five, release is five. Um, and the output is just, uh, you know, 5.75 or so, mainly just to uh, have a decent volume coming back in without clipping. But the important numbers are these two. And then for gain reduction, let me just play this and I'll turn around and look at what we're doing. We're doing about, uh, we're about here. We're about nine on the lights. I kind of want to hear I mean, it's gonna change as I start mixing the drums, but I like having this set up so I'm hearing this running while I'm messing with the drums. With time adjuster, I can feed the compressor a little more. I'm gonna add another 4 dB and, and see what that sounds like. Yep, that's more where I wanna be with it uh, tonally. And that puts us Uh, at negative 12. So we're doing about negative 12 dB of gain reduction on the distressors. I could play those by themselves. Sounds pretty funny on its own. So let me go back over here and just bring in this fader because I, I know I'm adding a ton of gain here and I want to make sure I'm still good. I want to make sure I'm still good on the master fader. I'm good there. My main drum bus fader is good.